Liftoff. Ten. Nine. Ignition sequence start. Six. Five. Four. Three. Six. Two. One. Zero. Welcome to the Alien Pro Podcast. It's Saturday, July 20th. 2024, and uh, we're going to do another saucer therapy session. This is our second one. Um, joining me today is Bob, new to the show, Elise. Welcome. Thanks for having us. And of course, MUFON Matt. We're all MUFON members, and then, uh, but we're going to talk about uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some news of the week to start with. And then uh, we're going to roll into contact in the desert, right? Yeah. And um, I'm anxious to hear about that. Um, well, this week, as we know, um, uh, future President Donald Trump, sorry, personal. Is got uh, his top of his ear shot off because he moved out of the way just in time. And one of the conspiracy theories, the one I, the funniest one I saw, which I don't know if it's true, is that there's multiple shooters. You know, we're talking about like the JFK yeah, okay. thing. Mm -hmm. You oh, know, any, that's anybody, not a conspiracy theory. Does anybody, <laughs> who right. here believes there were multiple shooters in the JFK assassination? Uh, ah, yeah. Okay, all right. It's kind uh, of well, we, that, what do you think? It's not a conspiracy. So they, they're saying that the same. They're they. They is. I mean, not theory. They yes, is that's Twitter right. X. And Twitter X is, you know, you can only believe about... People that like to stir the Yeah, they like to stir it. <laughs> yeah. And one of them is there's a water tower and a shooter on this water tower. So the guy, that's actually the guy that took out the shooter, or that shot the president. And then after that, he zip lines down off the water tower what? and gets in a Department of Agriculture suburban and takes off. <laughs> no, that's that really... Wow. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you okay? I'm sorry. I thought that was the, <laughs> My I thought that was the best one. one. <laughs> I, I have that, not okay. heard that one. I have not you know, heard And then there's the one that's the assistant uh, secret service, some, the woman with the sign. Yeah, yeah. That they say she's on the... <clears throat> the looks like she is talking behind... Uh, and with AI anymore, you never really know what's... So many UFO yeah. pictures I get yeah. during the week. And people, I know this is awesome. And I go, it's probably not real. Yeah, it's doctors. Yeah. There was one, I don't know if you guys saw the one. It looked like almost like a, a submarine. And they're digging up this thing in the middle. Did you see that one? No, I didn't see it. It looks like a fish almost, but it's a mechanically look, right? looking. And it's got soldiers all on top of the thing. And uh, Terry, oh, is I, it in Terry, a I know you're going to be watching. I think I've seen He that. was a guest. He's from uh, Florida. And uh, he's, he's, he's convinced that this thing's real. And he even sent me another picture of it, which is the same, only doctored a little bit differently. <laughs> so I go, dude, it's not real. It's AI. It can't, yeah. it can't, I don't think this, I, mean, I go, dude, I want this to be real. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. not. Right. right. You know? So um, you never really know. But the picture with, it looks like she's on, the, on a radio or doing something behind, right before behind the, the shot. Side. Right before the See, shot. See, and I watched the video, and I didn't. I didn't see what they're saying they saw. Like, they're saying she held up her sign, and I don't remember what the sign said, you know. And then when everybody else ducked when the shooting started, she didn't duck. No. She got at her camera. Well, that's not really true. It looked to me like she did duck and then pulled up her camera. To yeah, that's the what door. it looked like to me. That's too. what it looked like to me. Well, the crowd didn't really re react to it. If you watch him turn to the right, get, you know, hear the pops. The people were just like in front, just they're, they're not really they're still, reacting. Still well, filming. then they, there yeah. was the other shots, and then you know, yeah. and then the reaction. You know, happened. well, the poor firefighter got killed. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and the other people. You know, the part I wonder about, and I, I, I'm in no position to second guess the Secret Service or their or their responsibility because they have a huge responsibility. 
<clears throat> but for them to say that this building that the shooter was on was outside of their perimeter of responsibility. That's not true. I, I, well, they I mean, don't that may be true, I don't know, there. but it just seems odd to me. And the other thing they said, and they, they didn't say that they had been up there yeah. looking around prior. Well, then they I said read. they wouldn't typically send somebody up there because the roof is slanted. I'm like, I, I, I don't buy that. I, I think I don't know. Tim McMillan, I think it is. Like he's uh, cannot remember. He has his own. Not podcasts, he's got his own uh, news, basically. He said, so the Secret Service work in tiers. First tier is the crowd. Second tier is a little bit out past the crowd. Third tier is where the sniper guy on that they show in the side video, that's his tier. The breakdown always happens in the middle tier where there's eight other agencies and Secret Service, and they don't communicate much. So the first tier is always good. The third tier, so literally that guy from the third tier who was looking outside the perimeter had to go down because where that thing was located was the second tier where that guy was. So if you watch the video, you can see him go and he shifts down and makes a shot. So, I mean, he knew immediately where that shot came from. I know they all talk to each other, yeah. but I guess that's always a problem is tier two. Oh, well, the um, police department, what it is, is they're... Secret Service is in charge of everything, but they assign the outer perimeter to the PD. Yeah. The PD told that they asked for extra, uh, the Trump people asked for extra Secret Service. It's a proven fact. He asked for extra protection. Right. They denied it. Oh, they didn't give it to them. right. So the outer perimeter got assigned to the P local PD. Well, the local PD mm -hmm. told the Secret Service, we don't have the personnel for this. Yeah, you know, we're not going to be able to cover it That's like we true. want to. So there was a communication breakdown. I mean, he, he, how'd the guy get up? You know, there's all kinds of stories about how did he get up on the roof? He shouldn't have been You know, there's there. stories yeah, about yeah, he, he was carrying a ladder at AR-15 and nobody said anything. You know, right. It happened. People were yelling, "There's a guy yeah. up there!" He, he could have got up there the day before. You don't know. Yeah, you he know, might have been sleeping up there all night. They yeah. think he spotted. He checked it out. Yeah, he scoped it out before. I think so, I, yeah, who knows what who knows what really happened. Like, you know? Craziness. But um, I just thought it because it's news of the week, yeah. I would say. Yeah. You yeah. know, and um, he's got his ear, he's got his bandage on his ear, and like I said, told you guys before, it should be a flag. It should, it shouldn't be just <laughs> white. Good idea. You know, put yeah. the flag on. You should market that. You know, and that's not fair. Ear patch. <laughs> you never know. Later in the year, you might start seeing people. Oh yeah, ear patch. <laughs> in memorial of his ear part. <laughs> so you can see who's a Trump supporter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, that's our future president. You're here first. You're here first. <laughs> you told us no politics. Yeah, he goes and right he in. Throwing in politics. I lied. Right your show, dude. Do what the hell you want. <laughs> anyway, on a, on a lighter note, contact in the desert. Yeah, yeah it was I awesome. didn't go. It was awesome. It was awesome. I got my let's let's see what brought you got. the brochure, which um, I passed it around at our MUFON meeting. Yep. So there's a lot of advertisements, but um, has the schedule, what the talks are about, all the people that are in it. Um, you can actually buy a replay package starting at ninety nine dollars. If you didn't go, even if you did go, and you want to see some of the. Um, because uh, they, they videotape everything. Right. Did you guys go to the, was there seminars within the... Well, yeah, like a lot of conferences, they yeah. set it up where you have multiple multiple speakers, maybe three or four speakers across the same time slot. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of pick and choose who you want to go see, which okay. is very common in that type of conference, you know. So Elisa and I, sometimes we went to the same ones, sometimes we went to different ones. Mm -hmm. The first couple, we kind of split up, and I was like falling asleep. <laughs> On a couple of them, you know, and so I texted her. I said, "Okay, that's it, man. You're picking the next ones." Yeah. Well, then she, we went to one that she picked. But that, was, still that was Sunday, <laughs> was Sunday morning, and that was a bad one. But all the other ones were great. Yes, but there was one that Elise went to that I missed, and 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 I missed it for a good reason. Two of my big time heroes, George Norrie, George Knapp, were on, together. Right? Were on the stage together, yeah. and, and all they were doing is taking Q and A's. Nice. And it was a full, almost hour and a half of just that, and it was awesome. You didn't fall asleep during that one, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> but during that one, you went to see a gentleman named Michael Osadona. Am I saying that right? Osadona. Interesting story. I he, wish I'd caught yeah, that Yeah, he one. gave a talk about 9-11 and all the conspiracy oh, really? theories behind yeah. it. And he actually brought a model, and it was, um, was you know, the name? Twin Towers. Oh, no, no, <laughs> 
in a in like a little plexi box, and he was talking mm. about all the um, you know uh, they're talking about the chemicals and burning and how the building fell. When basically what he was saying is, we've interviewed so many people and we know that basically this was a controlled demolition. demolition. Yep, you can um, see it. Was, boom, boom. Exactly. Boom, boom. So he was he was just talking about chemical reactions, and he's he's an engineer. I mean, he was like a, a child genius. So. We went through um, his education. I took a screenshot of it. I mean, really amazing guy. But so then to do this demonstration, he actually lit the thing on fire. Oh, wow. And how it, you know, it kind of do, 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 yep. broke down. It was very cool. That's cool. So I was <laughs> almost thinking about that. Video spending that. $99 to just get See that, that one yeah. on. Did he say the planes didn't hit it? No, the planes hit it all right. Yeah, but then to be sure it got destroyed, so, so well, did we the, know it was... It one was of the, the things theory. he said that oh, the week before, a few days before, I'm a little fuzzy on the details, he said that there were crews that went in there... And did cuts. ...that, I guess, were placing the bombs or doing yep. whatever. He said Place. that there were reports Cut. of people that they hadn't seen before, although they had clearance to go down to do maintenance. And he said, we believe those were the people that planted the bombs. Yeah, because you can't just blow them, you have to cut them. Uh, there's a lot of information on YouTube about this, and I followed it ever since it happened. And I, I've always been believe the one believe that it's. Well, I'm from New York, you know, born and raised, and so of course when 9/11 happened, I remember I saw it on TV, and I just kind of I couldn't. Were you there? Well, then? it was one thing. Well, I was I was in California at that time. I was I had already moved here, and um, I watched it on the news, and I saw the plane hit it, but. I didn't see the building go down until I was at work. We were all watching TV that day. We, we were just, we couldn't, we couldn't work. And then the rest of the day, it was just like, we just sat there and we couldn't do anything. Phones didn't ring. Yep. It was crazy, yeah, it was but it was work. hard for me. I cried because I'm, I'm from there, right? So this was iconic. I had eaten up at the restaurant when yeah, it was yeah. the world at the top. So um, it's, it was, it's so it hard was very hard. I, I can't watch the documentaries now every September. I start crying. It's, yeah. it's just very sad. Yeah. The planes were replaced. People were calling from 30,000 feet. So mm -hmm. back then, we really didn't have that kind of... From their personal cell phones. So there's a theory that the planes were replaced, landed, and obviously those people were not alive anymore, but they got some of them got the call of their family. It, it, you're expecting that they're heading, you know, right for the... It was staged accordingly, so the people on the plane really thought it was a takeover that was... Already had been replaced, and, and so this whole thing happened because somebody wanted to destroy the buildings. No, there was a whole. It's all. I think it's money. There's a whole money thing. The whole financial money. Well, thing. There's, they yeah. say there's, that again, the inside of the buildings, there was no internet infrastructure. Right. So they were no internet infrastructure, highly contaminated with asbestos. Yep. And so now I heard that theory because a friend of mine had told me about it, but. I don't believe, because I heard they had to bring the towers down because it was going to cost millions and billions yeah. of dollars to retrofit and fix it up. But the Chrysler building, or excuse me, the Empire State Building was built in 1931. Still there. They keep maintaining yep. it. It's in great shape. Yep. I mean, I've gone up to the top. I mean, I've been there several times. And the Twin Towers were only built in the late 60s, early 70s. I was there when it was being built. Right. I mean, I, I saw it. How can something like that be in such bad shape that they have to... That they can't keep the maintenance up when a building that was built in 1931 is in great condition. Did that just doesn't add up to the, me. The ownership also has changed hands at some point. The day before, before right? I don't know if day yeah, I, yes. I, I, he, it was like a few days before. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. They, and he took out an insurance policy that specifically said about terrorist acts. Yep. And that guy is related to the bank owners, Roth. Yeah. Then, so, so I mean, there is something. There is a lot of weirdness. And yeah. then in the Halliburton building, about where the two co the two buddies he went to college with. Oh yes. So um, on another note, well related. So my friend that originally told me the conspiracy theory about they had to take the buildings down because it wasn't, you know, the whole uh, internet and infrastructure yeah. and all that. Um, now he had been in the service. He has a degree. Uh, he taught. Um, High school, math, science, etc. So he had two buddies, and one of his friends. So this wasn't Michael Osedona. No, this is my my personal friend. Oh, I thought it was the, the speaker. No, no, this okay, is my ahead. personal friend. All right. He so he had also had done some work for the government, and they paid for them to get their advanced degrees and stuff. But um, one of his friends worked for the government. You know, secret clearance. He didn't know the whole story, but he had called him up like six months or eight months before. 9-11 and he said something major is going to go down in New York City 
in about six months. And that was the last he heard Stay of out of the city, right? Yeah, well, I mean, my friend lives here in California, but he just said something, I can't tell you about it, but something major is going to happen in I've New York City. I've heard that before, too, from other people. And then, so that was the last he heard from him, and then after that, his friend, who was who told him this information, disappeared. Couldn't find him, and him and his buddy tried going to go look for him. It was like he was wiped off of the face of the earth. Wow. Don't you know, did he die in 9-11? What did he know that he knew something major was going to happen? And, of course, there's more conspiracy theories that we knew something was going down. And that all kind of ties together. Halliburton Building, which was kind of a blaze, <clears throat> went down, too. A lot of evidence. I love the, the, the news broadcast where the woman says, Building 7 has gone down, and Building 7 is still standing behind yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. And right. we know that the, these other buildings were definitely controlled demolition. I mean, there's no doubt about that. You can see it. Going down. The Pentagon. There was no actual plane parts. And the guy, first first guy on the scene there. I don't know what to hit this because I don't see wheels, plane, uh, wings, anything. It, it, it almost looked like a missile hit it. Yeah. <laughs> and they're and like, Michael and they, hold, talked about that they showed well. the whole trajectory of where it hit. Like, that guy had to be amazing fly, just to fly it through. Granted, those little things on top of the Pentagon are have missiles. They're active. Anything comes at that building, they're going to get shot down. Well, that's funny I, it didn't work. On that the other side of that, I saw an interview with a guy who was in an office building adjacent to the Pentagon, and he saw the plane come in, and he saw the faces on the passengers. They're like, you know, freaking out. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. Who knows? Yep. Yeah. I saw uh, a video a long time ago with someone, don't remember his name now, and he said that 9-11 was... Um, it wasn't, not that it wasn't real, but he said those weren't real planes, they were holograms. And I'm thinking, how can a hologram take a Destruction, building yeah. Well, these people really die. I mean, did they, did right. they ever check, do you need background checks on all the, the you know, I know passenger the lists? And all hijacker that. list, they said that the names they had on there were people that were still alive in that another country, in Afghanistan, Iran, or whatever <laughs> they were. That they were still I, I alive. Also heard so that, that list wasn't right. That those were just the names of fake People. Yeah. So again, there's a lot out there. Deep depth to the family members. Right. Just saying. Right. I'm yeah. sure there's a lot of emotion there. Yeah. 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 yeah bringing it up is probably. There's kind of all hard kinds too. of conspiracy theories with yep. Madeline. But anyway, his talk was really, really fascinating, and yes, you should have been there. So now you mentioned that you can you can buy. You can buy uh, recordings of. All yeah, content. not not individuals. You get right. a package for ninety nine dollars. Um, but basically what it is is you rent it for a year. Yeah, okay. after a year, you don't have access. A rebroadcast or a streaming of it for a year. Right. And it, you can't capture it yeah. but for there's, future there's a, viewing. Right. There's a bunch of, um, they Unless, package it so you, can, you have to go online to their website and you can see which talks go with what package. And there's a yeah. whole bunch. But unless there's a way to screen capture what you're watching on your computer. I'm not a tech That's person, illegal, but I'm Bob. sure that there's a way to do that. <laughs> That's illegal, Bob. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, cut this part, will you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was joking. You I'm not going to sell it. Oh, I'm not going to sell it. Hey, I'm not going to sell it. It's your personal use only. Personal like, use only. Disregard everything you just For a made. year. And then it goes away. <laughs> well, and you saw George and George, like you said, it was um, question and answer period, which I wanted to go to, but I'm glad I ended up saying yeah. the 9 11 yeah. talk. But um, you said that it was just really interesting because it was just a lot of questions and nonstop. Well, it, it was, um, you know, they did the big introduction. And, and for those two, for that audience, you don't really have to introduce them. Everybody knows who the two Georges are. But they introduced them. They bantered back and forth a little bit. And they said, we're just, we really just want to take some questions from the audience. And, man, people lined up at that microphone immediately. And it went just boom, 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 boom. That's awesome. You know. Did, did George Knapp talk about Bob Lazar? He did talk about Bob Lazar. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's, he brought up something that's his else. Favorite. Yeah. He, he brought up Lazar. something else that you might want to hear about. And I know you're not a big Bob Lazar <laughs> <Everybody believer. laughs> uh, I, I, I trust what Bob Lazar is saying. And I'll tell you what hit me the first time I saw his interview was 1989 on a VHS tape. I remember that. And he's up at the, up at the chalkboard or whiteboard drawing out all the formulas for this stuff and my mind is like glazing over but what he said was what he said that made so much sense to me because the same thing happened to me in the military where they compartmentalized 
the, the people Everybody. that were working at Area 51, which is what they do in the military. When you have a top secret clearance like I did, everybody thinks you just have the keys to the kingdom. And that's not the case. I describe it as it's kind of like working in a silo. And you got to have a top secret clearance to do your job within this silo. You don't know what's happening over and there's here, all these just other, in here. That's right. There's all these other silos around, and they're doing their little thing, and you don't know what they're doing, but you don't need to know what they're doing right. in order to do your little job in the yeah, so silo. Yeah, now, it's bullshit, though. The collaboration is the only way you're going to be successful. You know, they compartmentalize it because that's the way they've done it forever. That's right. Now, when I was in Southwest Wales... Um, I worked, the, my work environment was this huge, like a warehouse type of facility, and the communication center was a very small uh, room, maybe two or three times the size of this room, and, and that was communication, and the rest of the warehouse was this other function, <laughs> and I was fascinated with it, so I'd go out when I had time and kind of visit with them to kind of check it out. It wasn't that I wasn't allowed out there. Was it's it more like I should be in my office focusing yeah. on my thing. Well, what was the other thing? I can't tell you. It's classified. You can tell classified. us enough to Did you us. sign a uh, <laughs> yes. NDA? Yeah. It expired. You can tell us. This is the interrogation part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Dun dun dun. This is the interrogation starts now. I'm going to need some documentation from the department that made I almost got it. I can help put something together. I mean, somebody, I'll get something. My NDA, the ex, the expiration date was indefinite. Oh, that means you. Yeah. Shut the hell up. Yep. Yep. I can say we were involved in anti-submarine warfare. Uh, well, I can't go beyond that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, did you guys see Richard Dolan? Yes, we yes. did. Well, we had to because we took that famous picture for you. With his wife. He was, Richard Dolan that was one of the guys. Yeah. He was one That's of the guys that was so nice, so approachable. He's so friendly, very approachable. Yeah. Even like running into him at other parts, of, like when we were leaving, getting in the yeah. car to go to the airport. Yeah. He was out there talking to someone and... And then I saw him, I'm like, Richard, and he was like, hey, tell, now I know I met you, but tell me your name again. Right. And um, my, he's easily my yeah. personable. favorite investigator, author. Oh, really? Yep. He's got yeah, that Is this new book out, the U.S. Not yet. That's, it's that's coming. The one that you it's bought, you bought a book yeah, from I, did, he I did it. buy it. I have it. He yeah. Oh, you, it's, it's out already? Read it I wonder, yeah, let me know how it is. I'll yeah. It I didn't know it was out already. And I'm going to make a plug for this book, if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. That's going to cost you. I'll pay you later. Okay. Sure. The guy we Checks can't in the mail, but this is the guy we can't get on the podcast. Yes. Well, you might be able to. <laughs> so Anthony Sanchez. Now I can't say Anthony. Anything. Come on, Come the, on show, the podcast. Yeah. Hello. We'll and isn't it Anthony Check your F. Email. Sanchez? Because there's another Anthony Sanchez. Oh, yeah, Anthony yeah. F. Sanchez. Yeah. Um, show the book. So I can't say that we're friends per se, there but oh, I've met him twice because he's going to our We met him at our MoveOn meeting. Move meeting. And uh, I wrote yeah, a, yeah. I wrote a nice little. Not necessarily a review of the book, but a comment about the book that I sent him privately, and he was so thankful that he posted it on his website. Nice. Um, it's really well written. It's easy to read. It's a fast read, and it's got a lot of information in it. Cool. It's just got a ton of information. And if you're a technical person, he gets into a lot of technical stuff, too. That's because cool. they talk I, about the Archuleta Mesa and the aliens yeah. inside there. Yeah. What is his take on that? Uh, That's the one where they grilled it. Real? Yeah, it went, did he? He just went there, right? He didn't yeah. really. Yeah. He didn't see. I don't even really. You're gonna have to buy the book to know that. A, I think they held a conference at the location that yeah. he attended. He was probably a guest speaker. I dog-eared a couple pages to talk about, but now that I looked at him, I can't remember what I wanted went? to mention about it. But yeah, great, and, um, great he book. ate something and he, he got sick and he thought he was poisoned. Was that his yeah. story? Yeah. 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 So. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about the Georges, right? Because you brought up Bob Lazar. So he, 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 he kind of glazed <laughs> He's over. He's not done with you. He glazed <laughs> over Bob Lazar, but what he did talk about is a recent incident in Las Vegas with the, the family that called 911. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. craft that landed in the backyard the, and the aliens yep. went out. And said, he yep. goes, there's more to that story. He goes, I can't get into all of it, but I'll share what I can. What he said was the family contacted George Knapp because he's a TV in news Vegas. broadcaster in right. Vegas. Right. Yeah. He's very famous. He, con he contact the family contacted George Knapp and asked him to come out and, and take, their, take their story. 
And he said they went out there three separate times and the, nobody would answer the door. They would not come to the door. Like they then were told not to. They, they use, and there's, in some of the photos, you see this big circular area in yeah. their backyard. He said they did a Google map search and that circle has been there for a long time. Oh. He goes, not to take away from their story, because something strange did happen. And there's a lot of evidence that, that could something be repeat strange. Visiting. Huh? That could be repeat visiting. That has been there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Time. But he said, there's a lot more to the story that hasn't come out that he couldn't share. He said, but there is a lot of validity to that story. But some of the things struck him as odd, like you asked me to come out and then you won't answer the door. Right. He, he kind of didn't get that whole thing. Maybe they were told not to. Possibly. Or maybe they had an exclusive with someone else. Who that's knows? true, too. Who yeah. knows? They are right. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting because yeah, that's they, kind of a relatively current event. Yeah, and they, you saw where the, the beans were in the tractor in the backyard. Yeah. The piece of equipment. Shadows. And they were blurry. I saw them through the fence and the gate. Yeah, and they, yeah. Yeah, they were behind the gate. There is a picture really of them weird. in the tractor where you could see that they're like either in it. Yeah, or they were in it, it looking. Yeah. They were like yeah. they were trying to get the tractor to go. Yeah, I mean, but the part I don't get is the cops' body cam. They were taking films of all this. In fact, the fact the first one you see from the cops' body cam is in the background. You see this bright light drop through the sky, and it's probably a meteor, right? You know, but. And I don't want to get too colorful with my language, but my favorite part of that whole story was when the cop, when they're getting ready to let leave, look, we, we believe you guys saw something, right? But this place freaks us out. So if something happens again, go ahead and call 911. Or we're not fucking coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we're not. I thought, yeah, I love oh, that. That's classic. Cops are freaked out. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty amazing. Complete the F word out too, because Bob is the F word. No, I'm you're kidding. Gonna see that. It's colorful. We get colorful. It adds to the story. Are you religious? Do you go to church? I religiously do not go to church. <laughs> I don't go to church. I consider myself spiritual, but not necessarily. Yes, I'm spiritual up in certain... and mystical, but I'm not religious. Oh, you I are would rather mystical. meditate. You are you mystical. You are mystical. That is very true. Okay. And you're, you're just the Antichrist. I'm the Antichrist, yeah. yes. I am the church. <laughs> yeah. So when we first got to contact in the desert, um, the first person you well, you saw, because I was still checking into my room, oh, my suitcase broke when we got to the hotel, so that was crazy. But you went right to see Paul Hynek, and you missed like the first 15 yeah. minutes, but you yeah. saw part of his presentation. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Uh, honestly... I mean, he's an interesting guy. He's okay. But once, once I talked to him, um, and that I, topic was ufology 101. And I honestly, I don't really remember what he covered. What I remember is, I ran into him in an elevator, and I said, "Oh, I got an odd question for you. I'm curious what year you were born." And I was born in '57. He was born in 1960. That means. He was only like maybe 12 years old when his father, Jay Allen, had passed away. His older brother is like 12 years older than him. So his older brother spent a lot more time with their Doesn't with he their have father. four older siblings, three or four? I He's don't know, but I would say the seven. older siblings might have some interesting stuff to say because they spent a lot more time. But they with don't talk. Father. They don't. They're not out in the public. The older anymore. brother was there, and I think he did speak one time, but you know he's. I don't know if he doesn't like to speak or if he's not comfortable speaking or what the deal is, uh, but you know he, he wasn't one of the main speakers. Right. Yeah. I saw him later in the day because then afterwards, um, then I went downstairs and you went to your room and got your stuff ready. Um, there, there was a talk on artificial intelligence and the guy that was supposed to speak wasn't there, so Paul Heinick spoke for him. Um, and he had his phone because he had his notes. Uh, yeah. And that was really interesting, talking about AI, Right. And, um, you know, some of it's kind of cool, some of it's a little scary. So there was a lot of talk at Contact in the Desert about um, artificial intelligence. And, of course, the other big topic was disclosure. Right. Uh, there was a lot of disclosure talk. A lot of disclosure on. stuff. Yeah. I tried to stay and away from that. a lot of that. archaeology stuff. Yes. We saw William Henry that you've seen on Ancient Aliens, and he talked about Egypt. Yeah. That was really good. We saw Brad Olson, who talked about the giants. That is, been found real quick, with Egypt, is it a lot older than we think it is? All the is that the the Sphinx yeah. and all that? Yeah. I mean, they say that it's a lot older. I have yeah. to tell you, Elise is way into the archaeology, but when they get on that, I kind of go, 
Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're nodding off. But you yeah. you yeah. look pretty amazed with it. You were like, oh my yeah. god, he's that real one, knowledgeable. That one lecture, I was pretty. I got into it pretty well. But normally, when they get into archaeology stuff, I kind of lose it. It's just that I don't. Eat. I'm, every time I because TV will be on in the middle of the night, it'll inevitably inevitably be the Egypt. Right. And I'm like, Max, oh Max. hey, come on in. Max. 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 Max, Max is needs here. To be on TV. <laughs> Look, finally. <laughs> He came in and chewed my leg off. This is really the star of the show. Here. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, no, no. so he just walked on in. Mom? It's like, hey. Where's mom? Yeah. <laughs> um, Where's mom? Is that the Sphinx? It's you can Bob see the the what where it water at some point was all the way. Yeah. There was water lines. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was underwater. Yeah. It you, you know as you notice things today, where the water line recedes, it leaves these lines, and that thing. I, it, I think it's a lot older than what yeah. I think it is. Well, I remember yeah. they're in the desert, but at one time the Nile would have been higher. Yeah. You know, just like well, it, it was lot. They say the desert. You, it's funny because you, as we just, you know, we go to school and you're, it was about I think junior high. We were talking <laughs> about um, Egypt, and they it, it depict everything as the desert. Well, it was actually not really desert back then. It was a lush. Yeah, it's not getting yeah, rainforest. You know, the only thing, and I, I was always fascinated with the Babylon. You know, Babylon would have all of the the plants. Like, the the, uh, the, 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 the all the plants and things. You know, but right. it's you know, it's not a real depiction of the way it was. Yeah. You know, the way we were taught. It not the way it was. Lot, now. Looked a lot different. Yeah. So, but. You know who knows, and how did they move all these stones to make the? That's still the pyramids? questionable. That's always that's, that's, yeah. that's always the big question. Or are you just going to? Well, I was, and the other um, speakers I was really interested in seeing was Linda Moulton Howe. Mm -hmm. I followed her work for years, and Travis Walton. Uh, I actually uh, went to a books. I think I think it was a very small UFO conference here in Sacramento many many years ago, probably twenty years ago, and Travis Walton was there. Uh, with his new book, the Fire in the Sky book had just come out and he was autographing it. So I got his autograph on the original book and then he was at Contact in the Desert. And what you notice about Travis Walton, um, you know, he's not a professional speaker. He, he To me, he seems a little uncomfortable. He's very shy. He's very, very shy. Quiet. You have to really quiet. pay attention. He's got a soft, I mean, you really got to pay attention to hear him because he is just so quiet when he tells his story. Right. You know. But the funniest thing, if you remember the movie Fire in the Sky, you know, they, they come upon this craft. He gets out of the truck and runs up to yep. it. Now when he autographs his books, he says, stay in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is classic. I lived yeah. up in Snowflake, Shello, Heber, yeah. and Overgard for six years. Yeah, yeah. You um, mentioned that. About 2008, around yeah. there, for about six years, yeah. But Never saw anything there. Soft spoken, but really, really nice guy. I had my yeah. picture taken to him, and yeah. I got to talk to him. His son was there with him, or one Fire of his Max. sons. Oh, is that the, the, the tall, skinny guy? Yeah. Also, his son, also very quiet, doesn't say too much. But, you know, I, I can imagine how hard it would be because he was telling his story. He says, I'm sure you've all seen the movie. And he reiterated his story. He said, it, you know, it was really hard because, you know, the family was harassed. My friends were harassed, right, because the police thought you guys killed him. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> and then even coming back, people didn't believe him at, at that time. Yeah. So it was, yeah. I can I can see why he's only, so shy about it. The only reason I believe his story is he, oh, they offered, his, all of his friends and the witnesses were offered tons of money to tell, to try to debunk that story. Yeah. Nobody took the money. Yeah. Right. Right. People in the town, because I lived there, and I bring up that story. A few of the people are like, "Oh yeah, that dude did a lot of drugs and he drank and blah 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 blah." They sure they kind did. of down. Well, they were in their twenties and it was the seventies. Right. So, so right. That's yes, what that that the town was thinking. True. You know, at that time, imagine. But then when they passed those five uh, polygraphs, like yeah, it was like right. hey, all of them, every one of them passed over and over and, and over. And a couple again. of the of those guys have now passed away. Yeah. He was still alive. Yeah. And I saw interviews with the actors who played Dee Dee Sweeney and uh -oh. uh, Robert Someone's Patrick. In trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, when, they, when those when, they, when the actors were interviewed because they spent a lot of time with okay, thank you. Travis Walton and his brother-in-law Mike. Mm -hmm. Um they truly believe their story. Right. They truly believe right. what they say happened, that, you know, actually happened the way they described it. So, that, so I was I was anxious to see Travis Walton, um, Linda Moulton Howe's 
presentation. It was good. It was interesting, but a, I was surprised because a lot of it was pre-recorded, like I mentioned to you. So She'd she would something. have this thing going, and and then it was out of sync. So we kept trying to tell her, you know, <laughs> it's even you're, mouth you're still moving. speaking. A, you're speaking about a slide we but can't the, see right now. She was like, so there was some technical problems there, but the topic was still interesting, yeah. and she is still very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't um, she have actual UFO crash material in a? Oh, you know, oh, safe safe yeah, because yeah. they showed it on Ancient Aliens and stuff yeah. like that. Now, the story I heard about Lynn the Molten Howe, and I don't know if it's true, because all these stories you hear, you know, who knows, but the, know. the way she initially got interested in it was her brother called her. He was in the Air Force, and he was at a missile base when a UFO came over and shut down all the nuclear missiles. Oh, really? That's the story I heard. I don't, like I said, I don't know if that's true. But that's how she initially got interested in the She didn't say which one? No. No. And then, of course, she got into the whole cattle mutilation thing, which has yeah. been like the major focus of, of her career is the right. cattle yep. mutilations. Yeah. Crop circles. Yeah, Linda's lecture was about uh, aerospace UFO whistleblower about Mars. Was that the lecture that you yeah. saw? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Where do they think this disclosure is going? I mean, do they... Well, you know, I, all of these people. Who who was your buddy um, that spoke about disclosure? Oh, oh Nick. Nick Pope. Okay. So Nick, okay, Pope. Nick Pope, like she said, he's probably the most approachable guest speaker. Yeah. In Richard fact, Dolan comes in a close second. Yeah, we were a little bit disappointed because one night they had a meet and greet for all the guest speakers. That was the second night. And like Nick Pope was one of the only ones that showed up. And some of, some of the lesser everybody. some of the lesser known celebrities were there. Right. But I thought everyone was going to be there. We get a chance to talk to people, and I was really disappointed. Yeah, we're, but right. Nick Pope is really interesting, and he talked a lot about disclosure, and he he talked about some of the aspects of the problems with disclosure that we may not think about, the financial implications to the market. Right. You know the implications Crash. to the various religions around the yep. world. Yep. The implications to our political systems. I mean. He had a whole litany of reasons why the government may be just approaching it very slowly. Yeah, I think I. And I've, it made like a the, lot the pros of sense. And the cons. And the, the name I of sent. his lecture was to disclose or not to disclose. Right. Yeah, that thing I sent in the group was about slow disco disclosure over the next seven years. Just kind of leak a little bit here and I'm there. I'm getting older, man. I can't. So oh, you, you want you want the fast version? I think you got to upgrade. We're gonna for get that. you a pacemaker, brother. We'll yeah. Just yeah. 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 Right. I'm gonna need it. Wake him up. Wake him up. Well, they then, say, well, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, they one of the stories is that you know we're in touch with these aliens. I'm listening to that Spotify. Okay. That you sent me. Yeah. Um, with. Uh, she, Danny Sheehan, Danny Sheehan. Mm -hmm. another one of my less favorite people, but um, they do talk about. Tell us how you really feel. How <laughs> he's probably not going on, first. but that's okay. Uh, Come on, Danny. Dr. <laughs> Dick. And we saw, so, uh, him. we saw him. The, the, the uh, you know, he's saying that there's five. Okay, there's five races of these aliens, yeah. extraterrestrials, I should say, and that the. They're in touch with the government. They have gotten in touch with the government. Is a, always obviously, you know, depends on what your theories are. But some of them are my not the ones I like. Is that they're they're in communication with the government on some level, possibly this government above our government. Well, we talked about this. Yeah, the, the secret government last time. I was yeah. yeah. So that the cabal and that they're telling they're telling our government that the. The extraterrestrials don't want it to disclose, but I don't know if they even care. Would you? Do you think they would even care? You know what I mean? They might be like, uh, you know, the movie. Uh, it's like out of Star, you know, out of Star Trek when they say there's, a, and people have said on the UFO shows there's a galactic federation yeah. type of thing, and also they're not. It's on, you know, it's their agenda. I just want to say you can't true. handle the truth. Maybe we don't taste as well as we used to. So, yeah. like, whatever. That's can awesome. tell well, all the now. pollution and crap we've gotten. So yeah. 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 Right. Global warming's affecting our well, people. Yeah. Can we, taste, can we taste like chicken? I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, I haven't tried. I don't know. <laughs> but think, if you look at all the wars going on and how, I mean, just in the, our own country, it just feels like we're just at each other's throats yeah. constantly. All the time. crap. 
you know. I blame social media. Nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. So nuclear, 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 nuclear I don't know. You think we should go down? Or, Shit, no, I'm not walking into that crap. Let's wait till they calm down. I blame COVID. Oh, that, Everybody that blames one. COVID. Well, oh, COVID boy. made people a little Crazy. too... Especially Crazy. those people that work at home, you know, they get a little... <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm not saying that was a day. I am not in the office. Right there. Not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not in the office dealing with office politics and BS. I love working or social or socializing with the human race as much as you used to. Yeah. There might be reason for that. As much as I used to, and I think that's fine for me. But I know a lot of people have trouble with that because they're very. I don't know about the human race. I don't know if I like socializing with them. I think I'm. Hang out with your dog. I think Max is a better I'm, hang out. I'm not sure if I want to be reincarnated and come back for the next generation. Right. I mean, we're just too messed up right now. <laughs> so what else? What back else? Back to contact in the next Oh, you want to go more? Also, yeah. well, I just want to say, I just want to say about Nick Pope. So again, personable, approachable, always smiling, always happy. Crush. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm my boyfriend material. No, oh no, my, my <laughs> yeah. celebrity crush is Mark D'Antonio, the oh, astronomer. You've heard it here first. He's handsome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick, yeah, I'm just saying, is a super friendly, very nice. And you know those Brits, right? They love to drink. Right. So every night at the get-together, there's always like, something going on at night. The dude is never without his bottle of Michelob. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Night. Uh-oh. Speaking of which, is it five o'clock somewhere? That's what you know always watch? Right. Well, you know, I've got... Whatever you need. I have a fully stocked bar. I did put some vodka in there. I hope you don't mind. Might have to uh, Uber home. <laughs> now he tells me. <laughs> so Brad Olson, which we mentioned before, was another guy that we saw. Um, so his talk was um, really about uh, giants and the history of giants. Yeah. And how, you know, that people, was pretty interesting. That was very interesting. And yeah. the guy is six foot nine. So yeah, I mean. Like giant. So he's a giant himself. He's a medium giant. So, so there was a little archaeology all, mixed so with that because it was history. We have some bones and things to prove. It. Smithsonian yeah. supposedly yeah. hiding the a lot of stuff. Smithsonian, you know, hiding stuff, yep. yes. Yeah. Yep. What, what, why are they hiding? We, we can't. They don't you want can't handle the truth. You can't handle, you can't handle, handle, handle the truth. truth. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm like, so what's the big deal about it? Is there there might have been we're giants. We're wrong in right? history all the time. We know so we're wrong. We know there were pygmies. Why couldn't there have been giants? Right. Right? What does it matter? Exactly. Who else? Oh, God. Um, let's see. Well, we saw Dwayne Olinger. Okay. Oh, from Mr. Blind Blind Frog Frog so I'm going to talk about Dwayne Olinger, if you don't mind. Go right ahead. I so love Dwayne. I had heard of this show, Mr. at Blind Frog Ranch, but I'd never seen it. Because me neither. I, told I you about still, it yeah, she told me about well, it. Well, you told me about it, and then he's David up there too. being interviewed by this he, Captain Ron, who's Captain. another podcast guy, I guess. Yeah. I didn't know who he was either. But. He, Captain Ron is interviewing Dwayne Ollinger, who's the owner of this ranch, and I really couldn't follow the story. And there are questions from the audience I didn't understand. And I for, seen for the your show. listeners that aren't familiar with Blind Frog Ranch, basically it's in the Uinta Basin, which is clo- uh, 30 miles away from Skinwalker yeah, Ranch. Close. So they also have weird stuff, UFOs. Um, you know, every time they dig and drill, just like Skinwalker Ranch, batteries die, equipment dies, yeah. uh, always problems. So they, yeah. they have the same paranormal anomalies. But the big thing there is they, they know that there's, they did tests and there's like a big meteorite under there that's causing some readings. But the reason for Blind Frog Ranch, for him buying it, was the, the, um, the rumor that there's ancient Aztec gold. Because when the conquistadors came, they took their gold and they went north. So this is the, the mystery. Doug is a real big supporter of Skinwalker Ranch, too. So well, I was just going to say, when I, we got back from contact with it's the It's Oak Island with UFOs. Oh, I love Oak Island. <laughs> <laughs> it's people like you that keeps this stuff alive. You heard it here first, <laughs> folks. So when we, came, when we came back from the conference, I, I, I binge-watched all three seasons of, of Blind Proud Ranch. So now I feel like I'm up to speed, and he yeah, didn't verify it. And now it makes sense. Season. Yeah, she, now it makes sense. Now she I know told me, David, about. shout out to David. Um, about it. I haven't watched it either yet. It's only three seasons? Three seasons yeah, so going on, uh, And they're short seasons, season like eight episodes per season. Very Did they short. find anything? Like a treasure? I can't tell you. <laughs> they found a couple of, co- of um, gold coins show. that are back. A couple of buttons. buttons. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> that's the other one. That's the other one. That's the other one. But don't you watch some of these shows and then you go, God, is this going anywhere? Yeah, that's, that's, that's him. Oak I watched Oak Island for the. I was the biggest fan for the longest time. I did. Finally, 
an episode came on season after season, and I just looked at it and I went, fuck this. They just they're keep digging, digging and digging and digging. <laughs> they're not getting anything. They How many of us are hours? Broke. Why don't touch tech? Yeah, I'm mad. And we're back. And we're back. Steve Bassett. Live from Doug's Den. <laughs> Doug's Den. Doug's Den. Doug's Den. Brought to you by... Doug's Bar. Brought to you by Jack Daniels. <laughs> and Orange Juice. What else we got? What else we got? Well, see? Stephen Bassett, of course, his big like thing was disclosure. I was telling Matt that I rented him in the elevator. And uh, you know, it's really funny because he's a little guy. He's always dressed in black. He's always got his sunglasses on. But I ran into him in the elevator. He's like... It's almost five o'clock. We should be hearing more about disclosure. And I'm like, <laughs> he's always so full of energy. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, he's, he's high. But yep. that's just how he is, you know. Yeah, he was good. I saw him at the one in here in uh, Cal- well, it's California, San Francisco, and he was super high energy. Very, very he's high like, energy. yeah, disclosure's coming. It's, which, it's gonna be there. Which did you go to UFO Con? Yes, I think that's the one. Yeah, that yeah. was the one put on by Laurie and Fenton. I think so. Okay, I was at the same one. Oh, did you go to that one? Yeah. yeah. I went on, only went on one day. What day was it? Was it Saturday? I think it was because I had, I had bought all of them, but I can only make Saturday. So I have a cool story about that when we have time after your... Uh, what we got next? Round so up Stephen Bassett, what else? We did... did uh, well, we Olinger, did, did you talk, you didn't talk to Olinger, the Flying Fog Ranch guy? I got to speak to him. Oh, you didn't speak to him? Mm-hmm. No, I, I never see. spoke to him. Uh, well, one of the um, I was one of the ones that asked him a question in his lecture, and some of the things that they found, they found some really interesting things, but one of them was his security guy found these iridescent worms in this pond, and, a, and part of where this pond is, underneath it when they first got the ranch, they found all of these blind frogs, which is why he named it Blind Frog blind ranch. ranch. But they found these iridescent worms, and they put them in a jar, and I, I said I was really intrigued by that, but then we heard nothing. Yeah. So in the next season, are we going to find out? And he was like, stay tuned. Uh, the, and that's uh, all he said. I'm like, damn it. I want to know. Tuned. Keep watching. Because they were very weird. They, they were see-through. I don't know, but <laughs> keep watching. Keep watching. Yeah, those, that, they were weird. Yeah. And you're right. They, they, they mentioned it on one episode and kind of glossed over it and kept Did going. Did they show them? Did they show them? Yeah. On the episode, they showed them. They were these yeah. really weird, yeah. translucent worms. Yeah. That's crazy. I watched the episode. Well, I watched. I watched a bunch of episodes of it. But it was interesting because the kid. I like his kid. This guy's fearless. Oh, Chad. Yeah. Yeah, he'll do anything. Like, yeah, he's gonna he go might. in the cave with the scuba gear. My yeah. greatest fear for that guy is his hair is gonna get cut. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that hair is all over the place. Well, he's, he's got, got dreads. He's camping out there with his wife and, and kids, his and you know, it's it's really cool. You know, they got the family out yeah. there, and yeah. but they, they live in that little trailer. But they, out there? The, yeah. I saw oh, wow. one, ep- I think the last episode I watched, they were actually found a cave. And the floor, it was a really nicely done. The floor is like, it's stone, but it's finished. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Not like a rough thing. And they walked to the end, but then they had uh, carbon dioxide. The gas, and they had to get out of there. That's, right. they had yeah. That's when they were lowered down into the cave, right? Yeah, so whatever yeah. happened with that cave. Did they do anything else with that? Did they didn't watch it to find out. Not really. That was, <laughs> that was, that was, that was towards <laughs> the end of the season, so I guess I'll stay just say tuned. Stay tuned, right? Stay tuned. I guess. Probably, oh, was that the end of that? Was I'm going to guess November is because they usually show it at the end of the year, so I'm getting. I'm guessing. Was November. that the last one of this? Was that close to? I don't know if that, that was, was the last one, but it was close to the end. I think that was like midway through. Yeah, season it was. Three. A, yeah, I, there were still seasons, like episodes left. I think. Yeah, did I didn't the show what it was all about. They ever, did you see the episode where they were lo- looking at the UFOs at night? Because they were they looked metallic I and they were look tri- back triangular. Because I missed that something. Yeah, I didn't see that. I one. wrote down what episode it was, so I'll have to look. What at my season? Notes. Yeah, let me that? know. The, the first one. Or? It would have been two or three. It wasn't okay. the first season. I'm at the watch. But anyway, things. I spoke to him, really nice guy, but also very soft spoken. I don't think he was feeling well. Because I ran into those other people that said that he also seemed a little off. Oh. Um, and I went, when I was speaking to him, I went to shake his hand, and he says, oh, I have arthritis. So he did not have, I got the firm grip. He did not. Oh, wow. Hmm. Interesting. But he's also very intelligent, right? He went to school and finished early, and the teacher said, oh, nothing will ever become of you. But he took all these tests, and he was Smart. high IQ and all that. And this place is 30 miles away from Skinwalker. From Skinwalker. Wow. Yeah. That whole area. The whole, we went to mystical. 
Yeah. So what's going on with Skinwalker? Because I quit watching that too. Did you guys watch it to the end? Have you guys you all quit, caught it? You I have. Watching it. I'm watching it right now. I finished. Yeah, I think I finished. Or close well, to finishing Well, they're still the last one. launching rockets in every episode. Yep. yep. I'm waiting for them to do something. They're trying I to love drill. Model rocket Crown. They're trying to drill into the mesa so they can slow, get some. Yep. Why? Because I know that if you love model rocketry, you've got to hear the David and Dara story. Oh really? I will. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. You do. David and Darren, that's all I did. Right, that's it? You you bring us there? (laughs) But they drill into the mason. They're like, we're going to go ahead and dig the, because they found an an oval shape something there. Yes. And then I saw one of the episodes where they looked down into the crevice and they saw the candy wrapper or whatever it was. That was a while ago. Yeah. So now they're, they're drilling, so they're trying to go up this way so they can put equipment so they can sense what that. Shape oh, object so they, yeah. but it, it keeps, it it keeps out. breaking uh, the equipment k- continues to fail yeah yeah they just did an episode you should have seen yes uh, this week's episode well you can watch it i think at five o'clock next week because they show the new episode at six and the week yeah. before so they did they were trying to launch 600 drones but then a whole bunch of them failed and they were falling out of the sky they were getting hit by drones that was oh, kind of wow. cool even though the experiment failed. <laughs> they were able to launch some, but still things don't work like they're supposed to. Yeah. But no more answers, just more questions. <laughs> You're not going to watch Just it like Oak you. Island. You're not going to watch it. That's why I just let you guys go ahead and <laughs> just do me a favor. Next move on out, so just have me. Yeah, <laughs> not I was hoping that Travis Trailer was going to uh, Travis Taylor was going to be at contact. Travis Taylor. Taylor. I think Travis he was Taylor. last Taylor. year, Taylor. 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 but not this time around, unfortunately, because yeah. I would like to have met him and... <laughs> Talk to him. Another CIA stooge. Yeah. 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 Just he was. That comment. <laughs> we, we did this Legends, so it was um, George Norrie, Travis Walton. <laughs> Nor that um, oh God, I forget that guy's name. I know that's embarrassing. Linda Moulton Howe, Richard Dolan, <coughs> Whitley Strieber, and um, they just co- talked about you know their experiences and UFOs. And Linda Moulton Howe was all about you know again disclosure and just kept talking and talking and talking, but. Um, Willie Strieber is really nice, but also he tends to be real quiet, very yeah. reserved. I got a chance to talk to him. I got my picture taken with him, and when I was talking to him, I said, hey, I grew up in Westchester County in New York, and that's your experience was in Kent, which was not far away, maybe 40 minutes north. So when I told him I was from Westchester, he goes, oh, I said, yeah, pretty close to where you had your apartment or your, your cabin. And um, one of the things he has said on TV was that he's got that ear implant, and now he can't write without it. Like the aliens help him write his books. Oh, wow. And I really wanted to say, can you show me your implant? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wasn't going to do that. I'm sure that's kind You're of like not, that's, that's kind of rude. Flashlight. But when I asked him about, oh, you know, are they still helping you write? And he says, yes, I can't write without it. And he, you know, he kind of did this and turned his head. And I just, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> well, I didn't want to be Have you read Communion? I read Communion, yes. Okay, that book scared the crap out of me. I yeah. should have brought my book for him to sign. That was the first I, book I, I read. And then somebody it. told me, if that one scared you, you should read his new one called Them. I that heard one that scared one was scary. Is this yeah. his, his experiences? Or yeah. Is this yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. They're, all ex- they're all his experiences. Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. That's a great book, Communion. That's a good, that, that was a, one of the first ones I read. I want to uh, talk briefly about Mark D'Antonio. You did not go to his <laughs> no, presentation. I did. I did. No. Yes, he's my crush. He okay. He's my crush. But he's an astronomer, so you've seen him on TV. He's been on The, the Proof is Out There. Yep. He also has a video uh, company, so they do special effects for movies. He also analyzes. He's the MUFON analyst. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, but he was really nice. So he did a presentation in the evening where he had his computer set up, and he's got a thing, a uh, website called skytourlive.com where a couple of days a week he's on there and people get in the group chat and he's showing us, uh, he's taking pictures of like nebulas and planets like this this week, the moon, um, Spica was occulting the moon and he had that. Um, and you can interact and chat, which was very cool. But he, he was doing that live, so he was showing us how that works. Did you do some cool. interacting with him? <laughs> Let it put, put it this way. He can park his shoes under my bed any day. <laughs> He was in Connecticut. It's not. You heard it here first, Bob. Close your ears. You heard it here first. Oh, I heard it in ears. <laughs> yes. So, can we talk about Tracy Dolan then? Yes. <laughs> Richard's wife. She's beautiful. Your girlfriend. We're all a bunch of sluts. <laughs> Jeez. This, yeah. We can't help but we're human. Our mind is going to go there. <laughs> I don't have that big of a crush on it. 
Yeah. She's very beautiful and very yeah. nice. That's, yeah, she's. And Richard, Richard's a fabulous person. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great interviewer. Like yeah. His interview. yeah. He's very down to earth. So I, I don't know how much time we have. Whatever time you Whatever. Need. Can I tell you quickly about a speaker that was at UFOCon in San Francisco in 23? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this was so interesting because this guy was not scheduled to speak. And I still don't know his name. But one of the guest speakers, I don't know if they missed a flight or they got sick or whatever. So one of the guest speakers couldn't make it. So this guy filled in. And what he'd been doing up to that point, he'd been helping Lorian. Oh, we need a microphone here. We need a podium there. He was helping with the stage. But he got up and did his own little speech, presentation, about an hour. And I found the guy totally fascinating. And he, so there's a gotcha at the end of my little story. So I'll keep, keep you hanging there for a minute. But he said he was known, he, I asked him his age later because he said when he was a little kid, he, all his family came to his house because his house was the only one in the family that had a television and they were watching Neil Armstrong land on the moon. Oh, wow. Mm, okay. He was hiding under a coffee table. Yep. And, what, and what he was interested in is not the landing itself, but all his family's reaction to, the landing. to Neil Don, Neil. Armstrong, and they just thought he was a national hero. Right. So he, at that young age, decided he wanted to go into the aerospace industry. Yeah. And he did. He went into the aerospace industry, highly educated. Um, he became known as their computer fixer. Oh, wow. And he, got, he, he uh, told this story about, I, it feels like it was a mainframe computer that they were having trouble with. So he walked in to help them fix this thing. And his boss said, no, don't go in there. They got to learn to fix this crap. Let them do it. He was like, okay. He went back to his desk or whatever he was doing. So, I mean, I think, and I, I won't have the story exactly right, but it sounded like it was like three engineers and three technicians working on this mainframe computer, right? And so a couple days later, he went back down there to check on them, and the boss came in just furious, like maybe he got his butt chewed out because this thing wasn't fixed yet. And he says to this guy, okay, go in and help him. So he walks, it was like a laboratory set up. So he walks in the door to the lab and they all go, no, 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 don't help us. We're gonna get it, we're gonna get it. He goes, okay. He goes, but my boss sent me in here. He says, all right, fine, we'll take your help. So he looked at one of his buddies, one of the engineers, and he says, how long is it gonna take me to fix it? <laughs> the guy goes, 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, set your watch. He walks over to the computer and he waves his hand over. And he says, okay, turn it off. He waves his hand over it again. And this is mainframes you can walk behind for maintenance. Right. He says, okay, turn it back on. He walks behind it, waves his hand over it again. Okay, turn Was it off. Was he feeling for heat? Well, wait. He says, turn it off again. Waves his hand over it. And then his hand comes back and stops. And he looks down. And he goes, could that be your problem? And it was a tr- um, capacitor that had one light, one lead burned off. All right. Wow. And one of the technicians comes around and he goes, I'll oh, be goddamned. And he looks at his buddy and says, time. Yeah. <laughs> Eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but he couldn't tell anybody, but he couldn't tell anybody until after he retired is that for his entire life, he felt like he was in communication with alien intelligence. Yeah. It was like they were talking in his ear. That was the hand waving thing. That was the hand, and they told him, "Wave your hand over till you feel heat." It was the aliens telling him. He says he thinks it's aliens. He doesn't know. Right. But he's had this voice since he was itty bitty kid, guiding him through his entire life. And so where wow. where but was, he couldn't where tell was this when he, when they were fixing the mainframe? This was where somewhere in Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, for a guy that was not scheduled to speak. Right, that's a great story. Fascinating story. And then I went up to ask him a question. And my only question was what year he was born because I could kind of relate to this um, um, Neil Armstrong landing time frame, you know. But while I'm waiting to talk to him, he's talking to these three ladies and he, say, and he was telling them, remember when the shuttle, shuttle Challenger blew up? He said the president and I don't remember if it was Reagan at the time or who it was, but he said, I want a replacement within 18 months. And this guy said to his boss, I don't know how we build one. In, we can't even build a prototype in 18 months. Right. I don't know how we do that. 
and somebody over here says, we'll just borrow the one from the Army. <laughs> borrow yeah. one from the Army. Oops. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Yeah. yeah big so oops. That's when he immediately oops. knew there was a secret space program. Yeah. For every shuttle built, there was another, another one. Another one, yeah. Behind the curtains. Oops. That being used for other oh. purposes. And that's when he knew for sure there was a secret space program. And it was a lot sooner, or, you know, back then than when they announced that we've had it now. It was already going. Do you guys and remember where there. you were? Like, do you remember watching the moon landing? I do. No, in 68. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 69. 69. 69. June 20th? 69? I remember. Something I remember. like that. I wasn't born yet. That's what I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my mom was cleaning the house, and she had the couch pulled back, and she was cleaning the windows, and the TV was on, and it was, you know, a black and white TV back in, you know, in those big consoles on the floor, right, with the rabbit ears. And I remember watching it and being like, wow, there's a guy on the moon. I just, you know, because I was little. You had to be like six or seven. I was like seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember the JFK assassination more than I remember the moon. That movie. I don't remember yeah. because it was a day short of me turning one year old. So I don't remember I that. I don't remember that one. You either. weren't born either. <laughs> Do you remember that you one? You missed all the good stuff. Because yeah. you, you, you remember? guys, we were all little. How old are you? 65. You heard it here first. So we were probably four or five at the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm the kid in the room. Yeah, you're the. Yeah, I remember. Man. I remember the moon landing. You, we used to go down to the uh, the gas stations are handing out these. They were sheets of the the lander. Yeah. And you could punch out the they you could yeah. punch it out and make the lander out of a 3D model out of this paper yeah, or this cardboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they just gave it. Man, they were giving us like stacks of these things. You, you don't still yeah. have that, do you? Oh, hell no. Oh, man. Do you oh, feel like we cool touched stuff. on everything with Contact in the Desert that you wanted to talk about? I think so. It yeah. was a great experience. Yeah. I would tell people, if you haven't gone, uh, go for it. Yeah. Definitely. It sounds, yeah, I would do it again, maybe year. not a couple of years back to back, but um, right. you know, if well, they got you know, well, a lot of new speakers, go, I would yeah, go. It's about a year. Can you schedule the time off? Yes. Yes, I can. <laughs> the sure problem can. is there's so many of these things going on throughout the year in different parts of the country. We heard of another one that would be really fascinating to go to, Phenon. I think I'm thinking about going to that when it's in September and it's in Vernal, Utah. So yeah. it and it, they've got the get. It's basically mostly about Skinwalker Ranch. You they said talk November? about blind frog. In November. Uh, September, I September. think they said it's going to be. So you set up the hotel, uh, motel, and all that, you know, or hotel. Yeah. yeah. I know, I yeah, remember I nice, got onto yeah, the decent, website, decent but I hotel haven't. down at, when you did Contact? They have a good contact, the, the hotel was amazing. It was The Renaissance is Morel, the Golf beautiful. resort, oh, beautiful really? facility, amazing. The pricing, I thought the room pricing was amazing yeah, it for was. what we got. Really? We get a special deal because you're there for the conference. Because right. normally, I was looking at the hotel packages, two, three hundred dollars or more. Yeah. So, one seventy nine. That's, That's not cheap. bad at all. Yeah. yeah. If you have a roommate, for... it's better because you can, you know, half uh, it. You know, half it. Yeah, but, sure. um, you know, you got your, your bathroom, your room, which is really nice. Um, you're right there. I was going to go to a place across the street because it was $40 a night cheaper. And I said, right. first time I'm going to stay here. Money. No, spend the money. Yeah, stay I always like to have a nice place to stay. Same. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was, I thought it was really well done. Very professionally done. Um, I saw pictures. It looked great. Yeah. Yeah. Very was nice. it a big turnout? Was there a lot of turnout? Base. What did you hear? I heard 4,500 people. But that's what I heard, 45. I, I think um, Dolan told us that. This is how many days? Five? Five days. Mm -hmm. Five days. And they, 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 said, start they said there were fewer people at this one than the past ones. Really? Yeah. And they normally used to do this out in the desert, Yeah, they right? used to do it out they in the desert. They used to camp in the desert. Yeah. desert yeah. Just, yeah. But I don't know how they I'm did not, it in that heat. No, I hate camping. Yeah, desert, desert. Desert. when I got off the plane, when we landed in, what was it, Palm Springs, mm -hmm. and you got off the plane, it's just this heat wave just hits yeah. you. Yeah. Holy crap. no effing way I'm camping in And it's that. like, yeah. Sacramento was hotter. But this heat was different. different. It was yeah. so dry, much drier, and it just hit you like a wave. Yep. Yeah, it's dry. But yeah. the only time we ever had to go outside was they had, there was like six lectures going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So they had the main building, the main hotel, and then you could walk out to the pool area and to the cafe, and then there's another building over here that had more rooms. And then there was a big long hallway, and that's where a lot of the people had set up their tables, like Mark D'Antonio, right. Ben Hansen, Richard Dolan, Whitley Strieber, all of them had their, their tables. You can come up and get information and talk to them, and they were selling their wares and whatnot. 
Um, but they had rooms there that also had lunches. So, and that's probably what a minute, minute and a half walk, minute and a half walk or something. Yeah, yeah. That's the hardest part is who to go to because when the, the way I had that one in San Francisco. Well, we met a couple of times beforehand to try to see which ones we and we ended up, up going or to Yeah, we stuff. kind of looked yeah. at it and say, yeah. okay, so what what one do you want to go to because there's four going on right here. And then some you got to pay for, some you don't, right? Yeah, the, yeah. the paid for ones are separate and they were anywhere between twenty nine ninety nine and fifty nine ninety nine. I wasn't going to. But then pay you had extra. all the. I didn't no. want to pay extra. The free ones. Everything I'd already paid. Right. I just didn't want to. So with yeah. the free ones, there's always a panel going on in one room, and then there's three other lectures so you just have to figure out there was one day where there was like it was uh, I think it was Mark Dianth no it was Linda Moulton Howe Whitley Strieber and someone else at the that same time like, which one do yeah. I want to go to it's hard right you know. yeah unless they're gonna give me but disclosure right there it. I don't really want to pay for many either if you want to go do the early bird and try to sign up by the end of the year or by January after that it goes up and then in March it goes up again. Right. So you can save a lot of money if you sign up early. Right. I'm just saying. Cool. Yeah. Worth going. Definitely worth going. Yeah. All right. You guys ready to wrap it up? Yeah. Ready. Well, thank you for having us. Absolutely. It was good to have you guys. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of the Alien Pro Podcast. We welcome Bye. questions, comments, or requests to alienprobepodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> this is on Facebook. Check out our website, alienprobe.net. Twitter at, and Instagram at Alien Pro Pod, YouTube, and preferably Rumble at Rumble. Alien Pro Podcast. And um, appreciate you guys, Elise and Bob. Woo! Thanks. This is your second one. Second one. Hope to have you guys back. And I'm next. an Alien Pro Podcast virgin. Oh, well, not anymore. Wow. <laughs> this is my first time. Sherry's gone. <laughs>